Ready to go? Oh, I should probably put my microphone there. Sorry, we're a little off task this morning. <laughs> we're here for the Marion County Board of Commissioners meeting. It's Wednesday, March 30th. Uh, board session, 9 a.m., Senator Hearing Room, 555 Court Street in Salem. And if you would, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And first, we're going to have public comment this morning. And we do have one attendee, Melody Cotter. If you and your sweet little granddaughter would join us at this table over here. Oh, you could come hang out with me if you want to. <laughs> She's like, why are we moving? And then when you get settled, for the record, if you'd give us your name and address, please. Um, yeah, like... Uh, it's okay. It's warm in here. I know. Um, my name is Melody Cotter. Pull that microphone oh. a little closer. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, oh thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, my name is Melody Cotter, and my address is 30. Is people going to see this? Like It's on TV. Oh, okay. Well, you can just say the city and zip code. Okay, if you like. it's, uh, it's Salem, Oregon, uh, 97305. Great. Yeah. You want to say hi? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So um, I wanted to uh, talk about a couple of different things here. Um, can you, oh, I guess so. I have some papers here um, about rent prices. Like the, uh, I'm, I'm, my lease is up in August and um, for a four bedroom house, I don't know if you wanna pass this over there. For a four bedroom house, it's gone up like 42%. And so those are just like some Oh, she's she's gonna go be a junior commissioner. She's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so they've gone up to like forty-two percent, and um, I'm gonna have to move into like a two-bedroom house um, for the same price that I'm paying now, and that's just like in a year's time. And uh, like I was under the understanding that you guys had like a seven percent cap or something that you know landlords can't raise it past seven percent or something every year. I'm not quite sure if I read that wrong somewhere, but that seems really a lot and I have the same job same you know income and I'm like having to trade down and it just it's not good frustrating yeah very frustrating so um that was one thing also um I was wondering if like if there was any kind of like public comment on you know the impending um I don't know, maybe it's gonna happen or not, but like, you know, if if it so happens that we go into a recession or, you know, our dollar deflates, like, are we like preparing for that? Like, is there gonna be extra food boxes? Like, are people being informed? Cause I know a lot of people don't pay attention to things like that and they just figure we're gonna be okay. And I just was wondering if there was anything our county or city was doing to um, kind of get ahead of that. You know, cause it's concerning. Yeah. You know, with gas prices and everything, and, you know, um, I don't know if there's going to be a food shortage or not. It seems like there's more likely going to be than not, you know, with everything going on. So I was just wondering if, you know, there was a plan for that, for the people, for the citizens. Yeah, so typically public comment, we don't do a bunch of dialogue. Okay. So I've made notes, and I'm going to give you my card, and then okay. we're going to have a conversation after today okay. is fine. Mm -hmm. And I have your cell phone number, it looks like. Yeah. Um, so just a couple points of clarification. The um, legislature, um, a couple of years ago, is the entity that forced the rent cap. That was done at that building down the road. Mm -hmm. And I can't speak for the other two commissioners, but I adamantly opposed it. Uh -huh. because we knew this was going to happen. I come from the business sector, and yeah. when you try to control things from a, an outside source without real knowledge of the industry, you create problems. And it uh -huh. has created problems across the board uh -huh. um, for anybody who's a renter. Uh -huh. And so I know that you know that you're not alone in it. Um, Marion County does have certain programs that potentially can support some of the challenges that you may be facing right now. As far as inflation, that's controlled at the national level. Yeah. Um, what our responsibility is, as commissioners, is to make sure that our county is capable of sustaining 
whatever that, that squeeze is going to be financially for the services that we provide to the community. Um, and I'm proud to say that we're a very um, fiscally solvent county, so we don't have a lot of, of overhead from other entities that would create challenges for us. Um, but that doesn't go, go to say that we're not going to experience some um, um, negative impact from inflation or the other challenges that are going on in the market. Uh -huh. um, what else can be added to well, what we're hearing? Madam Chair, with your permission, yeah. um, I want to do make a comment. I know we don't normally, but um, the rent control is 7% plus CPI, which is consumer price index inflation. With all the money that's been pushed into our nation with all the handouts and you know trying to help people through COVID, we, we're experiencing this high inflationary. So it's not only seven, it's not only seven percent, but it's plus that one of the highest CPIs that we've ever faced. Um, the and I, I was just looking this up uh, on September seventeenth of twenty twenty one. Oregon's economic uh, analysis. The minimum, maximum rent increase for 2021 to be 9.2%. That was last year. This year it's going to be even higher because CPI, um, it was 9.9% in 2020 and it's 9.2%. It'll probably be over 10% this year, maybe 11% with the CPI. Mm -hmm. And what happens, I'm going to just say this because I agree with uh, the chair. <laughs> just say it. <laughs> When you start putting caps on rent, as you're an investor and you're going to build housing, you kind of say, what's my deal here? Mm -hmm. And you, you, I think what's happening, and I know because I rent an apartment besides I have my house, but I rent an apartment. And I just got notice, mine's up uh, June 1st, and uh, they're taking advantage of the full 9.2%. And if there wasn't a rent cap, I'm not sure they would. Right, but there's this fear with inflation and CPI that if I don't do this as a landlord this year, I'm going to get stuck behind. So the days of landlords that would would have a good tenant and um, maybe just bump at five dollars or ten dollars to try yeah. to keep up, I think those days are behind us. And yeah. uh, it's what happens when government thinks that they can control the market. It really messes it up a little bit. On that, the, all that said. I just feel really bad. In fact, legal counsel, we were just talking about it. Um, she took a little vacation, paid six dollars and six fifty for Not regular 50. gas in Southern California yeah. last week. Yeah, um, that really doesn't help the people that need the help the most. So um, we're trying to do everything we can to build houses to, to to make it easier to build all kinds of housing high-end housing, low-income housing, medium housing, because the more units you can build, the market, right now it's even hard to find a place to live Yeah, in. it really, it really is. It's slim pickings out there. <laughs> well, we really, I really appreciate you coming in and, yeah. and sharing it. And, and I want to encourage you, and, and I know you, um, uh, the chair gave you her card, to actually uh, testify at the Capitol when these types of subjects come up and we can help you get connected in that because okay. they need to hear from real people that this is impacting all of us, but yeah. especially. I'm, yeah, and right. I'm, I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned of what's coming. It's, uh, I feel like people are ignoring it. We've been privileged to, you know, always been secure and stuff like that. But I think with COVID, it really taught everybody that we're very connected to everything, you know, on a larger scale, all across everywhere, whatever's going on in other places will eventually affect us. I mean, um, you know, grain, bread, all that kind of stuff. And um, I'm very concerned. And I think people are just kind of ignoring it. And just like everything's gonna be fine, we're in America, you know, kind of thing. But um, I, I just wanna be ahead of the game. I, like my mom always said, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. And I feel like if we can, educate people and you know have them save and you know so we're not sitting there in lines like when, during covid you know getting food boxes and weird stuff like that you know just you know i just feel like a really informed um public and and i love salem you know um i i don't want to see it implode you know and um, I just, you know, I think that at a local level that we can start here and, you know, kind of expand from there. But yeah, I, I would love to be able to go and 
talk to whoever I should talk to because I feel like people just kind of don't care anymore and whatever happens, happens. But I think that, um, yeah, it needs to be heard. We need to be heard and they're supposed to represent us. And um, if people don't speak up, then, you know, even if, <laughs> even little Nadia here. And it, and it does suck. Like, I, I, I love my house, but it, um, I agree with what you're saying as far as, you know, the landlords are just like, kicking people out so that way they can raise the rent and then every time the next person comes they can raise it even more so I think that's kind of what's going on with me uh, in my situation and I'm just kind of bummed out that you know I really love where I live well and we might there we got money from the federal government for right. rental assistance mm -hmm. so um, we yep, you should we'll talk, talk about, about that because that, yeah. that might buy you a year anyway it, I mean it might it, it, it doesn't fix the long-term problem but yeah it might give you a little bit more time to plan. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's something that we should look at. But there's also other opportunities that we're investing in that, that are important <clears> to know about because we believe in home ownership. Mm -hmm. We think that individuals really want to buy and own their own homes, but a down payment is really difficult to acquire, especially when you're paying $6 a gallon for gas. Yeah. So through another program, we um, will be investing money this summer into down payment assistance for individuals that's great. in Marion County. and so. We are working very diligently within our community, but it is a much larger problem. And mm -hmm. I am really grateful that you came today. <laughs> and and I will, you know, call me yeah, and we'll I figure it out. Will. Yeah, I definitely mm -hmm. will. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Well, thank you so much thank for you. listening. I will definitely. Oh, she took call. her coat off. She's yep. gonna stay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I finally cooled off, and then she I took her coat off. Your coat off? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a small guy. I don't want to trust you. Thank you, thank you for thank listening, you. Um, yeah. and I will give you a call. Okay. I'll try to figure something out here. <laughs> Nadia, he's got your coat. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got muffin all over there. I have to go clean up. So. Oh, it's all right. Thank you. I love the fact that there's a child in here. <laughs> Thanks, my Hi. day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> here, here's your heart. Is that your heart? Somebody drew a heart. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> she likes it's a sticky note. You're supposed to stick it to all the things. All right. We'll move on to the consent calendar now. Madam uh, Chair, oh, before that's right. we do, I'd like to make a motion to remove item one to the contract review board and direct staff to provide an update, the next management update. Um, I just have a few more questions that I want to talk to staff about before this comes to the board. Okay. I'm happy to second it unless you'd like to. Does staff know we're doing this? I believe so. I believe Okay, and, and yeah. there's no timing issues? No. Uh, if we wait? My understanding is. Okay. I'll second the motion. Great. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. <clears throat> all right, now moving on to consent calendar. Um, Commissioner Cameron, would you read that? Sure, Madam Chair, I will move the consent calendar. The first item is under Board of Commissioners, Board Committee appointment, Appointments, Marion County Compensation Board, approve orders appointing Lori Christopher, Jolene Kelly, Melissa Villario to the Marion County Compensation Board with terms ending December 31st, 2022. Under OLCC applications, recommend approval of Silver Falls Hospitality LLC DBA Smith Creek Village, the Big Leaf Coffee House and Grill Sublimity, Oregon. Still under Board of Commissioners, Living Water Ranch LLC DBA Running Deer Vineyards, Salem, Oregon and approve an order for a temporary appointment of Sam Brentano, really? <laughs> as Marion County Treasurer effective April 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022 until the term of office expires and a treasurer is elected in the 2022 general election. Under business services, approve an order delegating authority to Danielle Bethel, Mar Marion County, who is that? I know, as soon as you Mar said it, I was like, what's happening? Marion County Board of <laughs> Commissioners Chair to execute all documents necessary to close the county's purchase of uh, 1505 and 1507 Blaine Street in Woodburn, Oregon, East Blaine Street in Woodburn, Oregon. Under Human Resources, approve a recommendation to establish and adopt classification number 350 
Deputy Health and Human Services Director. Under Human Services, approve a recommendation to establish and adopt classification number 189, Health and Human Services Intern. And finally, under Public Works, approve an order establishing a policy for temporary reduction in the cost to obtain building and septic permits from Marion County Building Inspection for property owners rebuilding and repairing <coughs> commercial structures damaged or destroyed by wildfires in September 2020, effective for qualifying permits issued between September 8, 2020 and September 8, 2025. Okay, and I'll second the motion, Madam Chair. And I just, just a comment, I know we don't usually comment on consent, but we are appointing Sam Brantano as our treasurer because our current treasurer is retiring tomorrow. So there's a vacancy and we need to fill that vacancy to make sure that we continue to have a county treasurer. And he is running unopposed. And he's the, running unopposed. That's right. election, right. so it makes sense. Perfect, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Aye, the motion passes. All right, now we'll move on to our first action item under business services. We're going to hear from Colleen kuhn Stephen and Ryan Matthews to consider approval of the public improvement agreement with Triplet Wellman Incorporated in the amount of $14,332,000 for the construction of a new health and human services building through June 28, 2023. I feel like there should be like a drum roll or something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're here. Long time coming. You can tell the days are numbered over. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to act so excited. Five Colin. months and one day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Colin Kuhn Shapin's Business Services Director. Brian Matthews, Administrator <laughs> for the Health and Human Services Department. Really excited today to bring before you and asking you to consider the approval of a purchase order with Triplet Wellman for the construction of our new Health and Human Services building. The building's almost 32,000 square feet. I'm proud to say that of, uh, from an economic development perspective that five of our seven contractors are here in, in, say, in Marion County, so that's exciting. I think uh, Triplet Wellman is out of Woodburn and they've proven uh, very well, very easy to work with. So Wes and Terry and Jeff have put a lot of uh, effort into working with them and that's been paying off. And, uh, so uh, we'd ask for your approval to approve the purchase order for $14,332,000 uh, uh, capital improvement uh, project number 21-026. I will say that $14.132 million was for the initial contract. We added $200,000 for casework uh, so that we could have the, the wood stuff done uh, from a separate contractor. So we added uh, that as an alternative. And happy to answer any questions. Ryan's here to answer any questions about programming, if, if you'd like to ask that. I don't have any questions. I'm a little sad we don't have, like, a video or a PowerPoint of, like, what it's going to look like <laughs> so everyone can see it. Maybe next time. Yeah. Ryan, I, I think we've had a number of conversations about this, so you don't – but I, I think because the public hasn't always been in those mm -hmm. conversations sure. and because we're spending so much – county money on this new building. I was hoping that maybe you could just talk a little bit about um, how this is going to change, how we provide human services here in Marion County, why it's necessary, sure. and, and uh, sort of justifying the cost. That's sure, absolutely. Happy to do that. So the, the great thing about this building is it will be built on a Center Street campus where we already have a Health and Human Services building. Uh, that Health and Human Services building currently or has previously housed uh, all of our public health services, our intellectual and developmental disability services, uh, as well as our administration for the department. Uh, as we've grown, there's been significant investments from the federal government, state government, local government in the healthcare system. Uh, it, it's a, a serious uh, need for, for our community. Uh, we've continued to grow, which has meant we've had to lease a lot of space uh, across the county, which has left people with, I, I think, an, an unfortunate customer experience because there's so many front doors to enter. There's so many ways to navigate our healthcare system. And sorry, sorry. sorry that's okay. Bill's laughing behind you. Um, <laughs> Maybe you <can> so, <laughs> and you know, even our, our original building on the Center Street campus is multi-floor. 
There are multiple individual suites, meaning if somebody was coming into our building to access maybe a, our immunizations program for, for one of their children, they would have to go into a reception, check in, wait, be seen by someone. If they then later that day had an appointment in our WIC office, they would have to go to a separate suite in the buildings. So they'd have to navigate and wayfind their way through that. They would have to check in at a new reception, wait, receive their service there. We, we envision a building where we have a single entry point, and so this the, the concept of this new building is all of our public health services will be under one roof. We will have a single entry point where families would come in and check in, and they can get their array of services dealt with, kind of a, a, with a, a smoother and, and you know, just more efficient customer experience. Uh, I think the more services we can have co-located on a single campus, I think really benefits our community in terms of just where they where they can go to get served and, and where more of their needs can be met. And then I think financially from the county, it makes a lot of sense to invest in assets that, that are longstanding, you know, for our community rather than continuing to have to seek out new rental locations communicate with the public where those new offices are located and and this would be something that we would own it would be on county property and I think be, be a long-standing uh, remembrance of sort of this investment that, that the county has made in, in our community and our health care system and something that I know our team is really excited about I've been working with Marion County for almost 18 years now and this has been something we've we've talked about or, or or, or, you know, thought of or dreamt of really throughout that time. We, we've looked at this sort of patch of grass in front of our building and think, wouldn't it be amazing if we had something something there to grow? And the fact that it's finally a reality, I really want to thank the commissioners, I want to thank our business services department, and, and I know our department is just really excited to see this investment really, really come come true. And, and we've we've been really thoughtful about the, the funds that we would use to, to pay for this cost. $14 million is a significant investment of taxpayer dollars, uh, and, and we don't take that lightly, and, and we wanted to make sure that while it meets the needs of our community, it's also you know, money well spent, and, and, and we feel like it will benefit our community long term. And I think significantly, um, the, the taxpayer dollars that are being used are coming from the state government. Correct. For this right. This, yes. this is not these are, property these are tax not dollars. Local county general fund using. dollars. Local property tax dollars. No, these are these are health care funds that we've identified that have come through the state or, or federal sources or, or other partnerships, and that we've been able to identify to pay for this cost. Great. Thank you. And then, in addition to all of the the logic, I think that goes into making the space more efficient for the customers, it's also going to provide opportunity for growth for staff. Right. If I mean, we've heard. I've heard repeatedly over my career that we don't have enough providers um, and I think COVID proved to us that we have a significant need and it's probably enhanced the the need for more services and access to services so this is going to also provide opportunity for that growth right that, that's correct we, we built in some some room for growth which is again something we don't always have the foresight to think about at the time we, we lease a property you know you tend to, to fill that space up immediately and then you're you, you turn around six months later and realize there's a new service a new program a new grant that you've received and, and where would you put them so so we did build in some growth here which i think is is really helpful and you know Every day we see more and more needs that our community has, uh, whether it's our, our unsheltered population, whether it's on the behavioral health or addiction side, or, or just public health with, with a lot of the communicable disease that, that spreads in our community. And finding space to, to bring in people to, to meet that need is a challenge, and, and this will help us do that. Okay. I have one more question. Sure. Uh, just another comment I wanted to make is we, we just heard about rents going up. That's true for us when we lease buildings. So I think from a from a financial perspective, owning our own building allows the money that we spend on it to stay within the county, um, and it sort of protects us a little bit um, as far as being able to control some of our cost increases over time as well. Right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Anything to add? No. Great. Right. Commissioner Willis, would you make the motion, please? I will. I would like, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the public improvement agreement with Triplet Wellman Incorporated. The amount of fourteen thousand three hundred thirty no. fourteen million, excuse yep. me, three hundred and thirty two thousand dollars for the construction of a new health and human services building through June twenty eighth, twenty twenty three. I'll second the motion. I would not be mad if it was only fourteen million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to make sure we're clear here. Sorry. Wishful thinking. <laughs> it'd, be a, it'd be a little shit. It would be a shit. <laughs> ten by ten is what we get. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Oh, Colleen, did you want to add anything? I feel like you should. Let, I'm sorry. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then I'll call for the. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Aye. The motion passes. Thank you both. Thank I apologize, you. Colin. I should have called on you earlier. Okay, now we're going to move on to an action item under the clerk's office to hear from Clerk Bill Burgess to consider approval of amendment number 10 to the lease agreement with Downtown Storage and Warehouse LLC to add $1,306,668 for a new contract total of $3,866,532.96 to extend the storage lease for Marion County Archives through March 31st, 2027. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, you did get a full packet uh, about the whole history of our archive facility. Uh, we have an archive facility on uh, Broadway Street that we've been at since 1997. Uh, the previous uh, inhabitants of that facility uh, was the, the Oregon uh, Secretary of State's uh, Archives Division. Um, and one of the reasons was because that was a very sturdy building, used to be a, uh, um, a bomb shelter, actually. Very uh, strongly built to uh, steel and concrete and all. Um, and we've used this for, uh, of course, all those years uh, for our archiving of sometimes permanent records, sometimes records that only need to be kept six or 12 or 20 or 30 or 60 years. Uh, we started out just using the first floor at uh, 11,600 square feet. Uh, in about 2004, we got 5,000 more feet in a separate building on the third floor, which was really hard to use. And then um, uh, in 2013, we added the second floor just above us and abandoned the other uh, property. Uh, and uh, then we're at now, we're at 23,000 uh, square feet of, of uh, archive space. It contains about 18,000 cubic feet of records and about 54 million pieces of paper. Now that was an estimate a few years ago and I'm not sure exactly what that is now but it, it's, uh, it would be a bit more than that. Um, we, in the word there, again, we keep permanent volumes as well as the ones that need to be uh, uh, moved and uh, accessioned out of there. Uh, we also retrieve records for all the departments in the county. And in 2000, we retrieved, uh, we had uh, 2006 retrievals. In 2000, excuse me, 2020 was uh, 2006 retrievals. Uh, calendar year 2000, 2021, the latest data we've got, uh, we had 1,564 retrievals. That's about uh, six retrievals a day where we're going back and getting records and bringing them to departments, whether it's the uh, uh, health department or the DA or whoever else needs uh, something there. Uh, we're also putting boxes in there. And uh, 2019, we brought in 1,700 boxes, 2020, uh, 982 boxes, 2021, 964 boxes. And we're usually taking out about 1,000 boxes a year to burn. Uh, it's a, it's a, a dynamic situation, and now that more people are going to more electronic records, we don't think that the volume is going to continue uh, to grow but we still have our permanent records that keep on growing, and then we still have some records that we need to uh, keep in there. When 2017, we were paying about 43 cents a square foot. Then marijuana came, and uh, there were uh, lots of, uh, warehouse space became a premium. And in that one year, we went up from 43 cents a square foot to 87 cents a square foot. Uh, and what we're looking at right now is uh, is uh, 87 cents a foot at, at uh, $19,995 a month from the <laughs> $9,800 a month before then. Uh, what we're looking at here uh, for this five-year proposal is uh, only about a 
half a percent, less than half a percent increase to $20,039 a month, and then after that a 3% increase every year. Uh, looking at what may be happening in storage, what may be happening in our economy, it seemed like that the idea of getting just a 3% increase per year uh, commitment over five years seemed like a, a, a very reasonable thing to do. Though in the long term, we might want to do things like uh, uh, the county in Dallas, Texas did and build their own facility. Uh, it, it could save us money in the long run, probably. Uh, but these facilities have to be, they're, they're just not your normal warehouse facility with, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, 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 cement and a little bit of uh, uh, steel, like where you might rent for your, uh, your own goods overflow from your house, uh, because this facility has to uh, hold permanent records that we need to keep them uh, free of, of weather, varmints, water, uh, mold, um, and keep them secure too. In fact, because we keep some of the DA's records in, the state came in and, and had to inspect to be sure that we had the right uh, security around that to, to, uh, to pass their muster too. Commissioner? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Bill, is there any reduction in the amount of paper storage due to like court electronic records and things that have been moving more electronically that we have to store from like the DA's office or even your office that are recorded in the We have seen a decrease in the amount that's coming in. And the amount that's coming in now is about equal to the amount that's going out. So we don't foresee needing more space in the future. It could be that if things continue like this, that we could start seeing that shrink, and then we would be able to maybe not rent as much space. Now, uh, we've got the whole second floor there, and they built security around that for that whole second floor putting a wall around the elevator and stairwell. Uh, but yes, in the future, maybe five years down the line, we could uh, start looking at much less space. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, does this contract allow, let's say that things become more rapid, and in three years, we've reduced by 50%. Can we reduce the cost or the, our square footage that we're renting with before the end of the five years? I think that may require a renegotiation, but we'd have to ask uh, actually our legal team on uh, that. Uh, okay. I'm not sure. And then, are you? Do you have an active plan to within your team to be moving towards um, encouraging electronic records? I know that we're going through a system upgrade for like title companies and those things. But in general, for record storage, is there a plan or have you started talking about what we can be doing to be proactive to not just reduce this, but also make sure that we have more, you know, kind of a permanent security of the, the, the records becoming electronic? We as a county have been uh, working on that for quite a while, and uh, it certainly is the trend. In fact, we're looking at... Uh, adding another level of security even to our laser fish so that that could be uh, considered a permanent record repository in the future. Okay. We still, there are still laws though for things, especially things before maybe 1976 that are in paper that have to be kept forever as far as things like deeds and mortgages sure. and that kind of stuff. So I know that the county, other departments have. I just wasn't aware that your office is. I'm curious. I'd love to see kind of what your your progress plan looks like going forward to to create that more electronic um, opportunity, just across the board, um, not just for storage. So I'll follow up and we can. Schedule well, sure, we can talk about that and we'll explain exactly what we're looking at. Great, thanks. Do you have any questions, Commissioner? Nope. You guys asked all the good ones. <laughs> oh, good. All right. Okay, Madam Chair, I'll move that we approve Amendment Number Ten to the lease agreement with Downtown Storage and Warehouse LLC to add one million three hundred and six thousand six hundred and eighty-eight dollars 
and no pennies for a new contract total of $3,866,532.96 pennies to extend the storage lease for Marion County Archives through March 31st, 2027. I will second the motion. Thank you. And just a point of clarification, it's $1,306,668. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those... Did I not say that? You said it's at 88. Six, instead of 68, 88. Oh! Well, I don't want to give them extra 20 bucks. Well, well, I could have... <laughs> so I could have added 100 pennies or taken off 200 pennies. The good Got news it. is that Madam Chair is keeping us on the straight Straight's narrow small. today, Commissioner. <laughs> Darn right. Uh, can we also accommodate this is going to be? Perfect. Okay, I have a motion in a second. Any further discussion? Hearing no. <laughs> that, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. Thanks, Bill. It's nice to Thank see Thank you, you, Commissioners. And, all Commissioners, right. I just wanted to let you know that we sent out 220,000 voter registration uh, confirmation cards because of the uh, uh, census and the update and uh, we certain that certainly is helping in cleaning up our roles as people keep on moving and will save us money when we get around to sending the ballots out our military ballots go out this Friday wow. and uh, regular ballots will be going about out um, April the 27th Great. So, uh, anybody's got any questions, please give us a call. And for the people on you know, watching, I really want them to get their election information from our department. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Commissioner, Madam wait Chair. before you run off. Commissioner yeah, yeah, Madam Chair. And thank you, Bill, because I did get mine, and I always keep that card, right? I put it in a file to make sure I know where I'm at. Uh, but a question I have is, I think on the website it said, um, that voter statements were available, but you can't find them for the candidates. Is there a place that, you know, if, like I filed a voter statement for the primary because I'm up. Is there we'll a place get that I'm up really shortly. We're working on the um, voters pamphlet now, and we will have that ready by Monday. And generally, we do have more things up sooner, uh, but because of... of uh, staff changes and all we haven't been able to Keep uh, have that as as uh, swiftly as we like but by monday we'll have that all official and okay. up on the and so you can just go to the website and then they can click and see each person yes we'll right. put we'll put the voters pamphlet in now there are a few people that decided not to put a statement in there but for everybody that decided to, to use their 325 words that is, that'll be there for everybody to see. And if somebody needs to see it sooner, they can come uh, to our office. But we wanted to make sure it was proofed and just right before we got it up. I appreciate that. Let's, I think we're going to request for you to come down and give us a, a voter uh, presentation on kind of what the process looks like um, start to finish here in the next couple of weeks. So okay. be looking great. for Jan to call you about that. Okay. Okay, great. thanks. Thank Have you. a great day. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to Public Works. And Ryan Crother is going to join us to consider approval for the resubmission of three 2021 Oregon Federal Lands Access Program grant applications under the newly reopened 2021 Oregon Call for Projects for the North Fork Road Guardrail Improvements Project, the North Fork Road Kiosks Project, and the Wintel Road Reconstruction and Bridge 47C76 Replacement Project. Hi. Hi, thank you for the record, Ryan Crother, Marion County Capital Projects Manager. As you said, I'm here to talk about resubmittal of three federal lands access program grants. This program's run by Western Federal Lands. We originally applied in October. Uh, there was a change in the rules based on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which removed the requirement for local agencies to actually provide a match on these uh, grant programs. So to quickly describe our three grants, we have our North Fork Guardrail. We identified a number of guardrail locations that need guardrail installed, uh, especially after the wildfire. The estimated cost of the project is $1,641,469. We also have our North Fork Kiosks project, which would uh, construct recreational kiosks, which would provide information, collect fees, direct people to which parks are open on the North Fork corridor. Uh, there's two locations we've looked at for these kiosks, one at the beginning of North Fork Road and one at uh, Gates Hill Road. The estimated cost for this 
is $1,308,277. And finally, we have our Wintel Road Reconstruction and Bridge Replacement Project. Uh, this actually provides access to the Ankeny Wildlife Refuge, another federal land uh, within our county. Uh, it would improve a one mile stretch of roadway and replace an obsolete timber bridge within this section which would continue to provide access to this land. The estimated cost for this is $4,142,268. So the intent of this resubmission is to identify whether we want to keep our applications the same as we originally submitted or modify the applications. Uh, originally, our uh, safety only projects did not require a county match, so the North Fork guardrail had, had not proposed any county funds. We proposed that we keep that the same as it was originally submitted, uh, which does require signing off on it to keep it eligible. Uh, the North Fork kiosks and Wintel Road reconstruction projects both did include a 10.27% county match. We proposed that we uh, actually reduce that to a 0% county match and submit these as fully federally funded projects as, as allowed by the new rules. Um, and with that, I would open it up to any questions. I like fully funded federal projects. <laughs> That's good. That was a good choice. You sure? <laughs> yes. Well, it depends on the strings, but in this case, uh, I uh, oh. <laughs> Okay. Sure. You always have to ask the details. That's fair. I just have one comment. I knew I was going to no get that slide. one. <laughs> no slideshow for me. You I even know. brought my glasses so I could see it today. You might actually have to look through the packet. <laughs> Whenever Ryan okay. comes, he always has a presentation up there, and I look forward to the cartoons or whatever. <laughs> this is a little earlier than I, I normally it. come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My Any turn. further questions? All right, Commissioner Willis. Okay, Madam Chair. I move that we approve for the recent... We approve the resubmission of three 2021 Oregon Federal Lands Access Program grant applications under the newly reopened 2021 Oregon Call for Projects. For the North Fork Road Guardrail Improvements Project, the North Fork Road Kiosks Project, and the Wintel Road Reconstruction and Bridge 47C76 Replacement Project. I'll second the motion. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. The motion passes. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. All right. Next, we're going to hear from Scott Wilson for Public Works to consider approval of the purchase order with Pack mm -hmm. West Machinery LLC in the amount of three hundred sixty-one thousand six hundred sixty-two dollars for the one-time purchase of an Etnier chip spreader. Etnier. Etnier. Looks very fancy. Oh, I get to use my yeah, glasses. Okay. Scott always gets to buy the coolest stuff. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, um, Commissioners, Madam Chair. For the record, my name is Scott Wilson, Operations Manager for Marion County Public Works. Uh, today, I'm here to ask your pr approval for PO number 902100 to Pack West Machinery LLC for the purchase of a 2022 Etnire chip spreader. Public Works utilizes a diverse fleet of heavy and medium equipment types to perform its road maintenance tasks. This chip, setter is a, chip spreader is a vital component for distributing a uniform amount of aggregate during the chip seal application process. Chip seals are a cost-effective pavement maintenance treatment that slows the aging process of our paved roads and provides a durable wearing surface. For fiscal year 21-22, the PO amount for this chip spreader is $361,662 and was awarded from formal invitation to bid PW1004-2. Funding is approved by CE number 21-150 for the purchase of this equipment. This purchase is essential to replace the equipment that has surpassed its useful life and will, <coughs> will be replacing our existing 2001 Etnire chip spreader. Um, given the age of the uh, chip spreader, it's, it's 20 years that we've had it in operation. We're, we're starting to experience some metal fatigue and uh, electronic issues with the wiring, so uh, we're beginning to um, realize some downtime during our process, so it's, it's long overdue. So, um, Options to, for your consideration is to approve this PO or withhold approval of the PO. Public Works recommends that the board approves option number one and approves the PO number 902100 to pack West Machinery <coughs> for the purchase of the new Etnire ship spreader. And I open for any questions if you have. Thanks, Scott. Any questions? No, but thank you for making up for Ryan and giving me a picture to look at. I really oh, it. oh, it's like a hazing day. And when, when's it coming? 
Scott? Uh, we anticipate uh, hopefully to June of 2023. It'll be about a year or so out by the time we, we get the order in. So we're still, I thought we already approved this. Uh, so we're still operating on the old one that breaks down 40% yep. of the time? Not this one. I have a story about this kind of a machine. I would have told it then. It was a chip sealer, right? Yes. Yeah, the chip sealer that I was riding on one day and they said it breaks down all the time. Okay, so this is going to replace that. Yes, it will. Yeah, a lot of, uh, we've, we've put about 180,000 tons of aggregate uh, through there and, and uh, have uh, applied uh, over 1,000 miles of two-lane roadway with, with this uh, since we patted this. So we put it to good use. Is there another one? Is that what you're saying? Not this one? No, well, we've done a few different pieces of equipment. Some you would drive and some you wouldn't, but I don't recall this one specifically. <laughs> Maybe I heard that we were getting, Brian may have said we were getting a new chip sealer and that will increase our productivity. That's, I just remember this coming, but I thought we had already approved it. So I'm, re I'm ready to approve this one. Oh, good. <laughs> You're ready for a motion? No, let's, I am let's ready for a motion, please. All right, Madam Chair, I'll uh, move that we approve a purchase order with Pack West Machinery LLC in the amount of $361,662 for a one time purchase of whatever that thing is, chip good. sealer. Et Nair. Et Nair. Et Nair. Yes. Right. I will second the motion. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. Great. So Thank my you. quick Appreciate story it. is, I have a friend who used to, like, when I was a little girl, I lived in Southern Oregon, and her dad worked on, in an asphalt crew. And every day after school, where if he was working close by, we would go see him on the job site. And for there, there was a deck on the yep. back, and... He was on the other side of the road, and he was like, just come on over here. And so both of us, I was probably in the third grade, hopped on there to walk across, and I had on these cute slip-on patent leather shoes, and my foot slipped off oh, no. the little deck, and my shoe was ruined forever. Mm. And my footprint was also <laughs> in the road, <laughs> and that's still in Talent, Oregon today. <laughs> so I left an impression. <laughs> anyway, thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, Lindsay King is going to come up for the next two items. The first one is to consider adopting an administrative ordinance granting comprehensive plan zone change. CPZC case number 21-004, Anthony Arnatov. And Scott Wilson is joining. No, Norris. Norris. <laughs> Sorry, I know who you are. <clears throat> Good morning, commissioners. For the record, this is Lindsay King, Marion County Planning. The item before you today is an application to change the comprehensive plan designation from developing residential to multifamily residential and to change the zone from UD, urban development, to RM, multifamily residential, on a 2.25 acre parcel or parcels located at 4310 and 4330 Monroe Avenue, Northeast Salem. The hearings officer conducted a public hearing on July 1st, 2021 and issued a recommendation that the board approve the request. The board held a public hearing on November 10th, 2021, considering all evidence in the record and approved the request with a two to one vote. The ordinance and findings have been prepared and the notice of adoption was given on March 23rd of 2022. Before you today is an ordinance for consideration of adoption reflecting the board's decision in the matter. With that, I'm available for any questions you might have. Any questions? I might have the hearing, so someone okay. else have to make the motion. Okay, Commissioner Cameron, would you please make the motion? He doesn't want to make the motion? He does not. Oh. Right, because he, uh, he was the one no vote last time. Okay, so uh, Madam Chair, I will um, move that we adopt administrative ordinance granting uh, comprehensive plan zone change, CPCA case number 21-004. <laughs> And I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. nay. Okay. All right, the motion passes on two ayes. Um, moving on to consider adopting an administrative ordinance granting comprehensive plan zone change CPZC case number 21-008, Snow and Curly Properties. Snow and Curly Properties. <laughs> Again, Commissioners, this is Lindsay King for the record. 
The item before you today is an application to change the comprehensive plan designation from developing residential to multifamily residential and to change the zone from urban development to limited multifamily residential on a 0.18 acre parcel located in the 300 block of Gwendolyn Loop, Northeast Salem. The hearings officer conducted a public hearing on October 7th of 2021 and issued a recommendation that the board approve the request. The board held a public hearing on December 1st of 2021, considered all evidence in the record and approved the request. The ordinance and findings have been prepared and the notice of adoption was given on March 23rd of 2022. Before you today is an ordinance for consideration of adoption reflecting the board's decision in the matter. And I haven't, I'll stand for any questions you might have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions? All right. Can you make right. the motion? I would be happy to. Great. Well, um, it's my turn. <laughs> well, sorry. He lost his <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the administrative ordinance granting comprehensive plan zone change. CPZC case number 21-008, Snow and Curly Properties, LLC. I'll second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. And Scott Norris. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we will move on to under the Sheriff's Office. Commander Stutrud is going to join us to consider approval of the purchase order with Rogue Jet Boats Incorporated and the amount of $116,630 for the one-time purchase of a 2023 fast water 25-inch center console boat used to patrol Oregon State Marine Waterways within Marion County. 25 foot, ma'am. Sorry, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, I, good morning. I'm Jeff Stutrud with the Sheriff's Office. Yes. It does say inches, by the way. <laughs> I'm just reading what's on the paper. <laughs> hey, you're right. 25 inches will not work. Garrett's My not going to fit on that <laughs> Brenda, I'd be a failure here. It also wouldn't be a good value. It would not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, inflation. Yeah. Garrett wouldn't like that. No, he wouldn't. I'm sorry, Commander. Uh, it's all right. So, again, Jeff Stoward with the Sheriff's Office. Good morning. Um, here to uh, request the board's approval to issue a, a purchase order to Rogue Jet Boat. Um, I was here on with Camber on February 16th of this year to, uh, after going through the procurement process uh, and getting the board's approval to issue the purchase or order. Now I'm back to actually bring the purchase order okay. and have that issued. Um, I think as most of you know, this is to replace a aging boat. The Marine Board had agreed to surplus uh, and then buy a new boat. Um, the boat that was replaced was surplused. So the money, part of the money that goes to fund this new boat, we already have the $25,000 based off the sale of the old boat. Um, the total amount in being $116,630. And it really has been a long time coming. I mean, it's, the, the old boat was a 1988 or 89 boat. Uh, this will be very, very beneficial to patrol on Detroit Lake, the Willamette River, any of the waterways in Marion County. Um, and again, it's been kind of a long time coming for that. So with that, if, I have, if you have any questions. Well, there's a lot of excitement in the Sheriff's Office for this purchase. So. Yeah. Yes, there is. Although I did have, I heard some banter about the color of the word sheriff on the boat. Oh. <laughs> so there was a debate as to who, what they got and what they wanted. And of course, the two people I was talking to couldn't agree. Isn't it green? What's that? Isn't it green? Well, I know that, I don't think, yeah, I think it's like an offset green for what the boat looks like, okay. but somebody wanted it to be brighter. Okay. I mean, you know, it's mm. personality probably. <laughs> It's all about me. We yeah. have we have a few days. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> On a more I... serious note, there, we are seeing more crowds up in Detroit because the other recreation is is closed because of the fires. So it's important for us to have good tools up there. Yeah, I saw. I was up there uh, yesterday afternoon. That's why I was remote, right? And Garrett drove by and, and with, with a trailer. I go, what? What do you got a trailer for? And, He's bringing up all the new buoys and uh -huh. stuff. Right. So I'm looking forward to seeing all that new stuff the Marine Board's helping Absolutely. improve the pond. It's been a great partnership with the Marine Board. And, and this is a Marine Board uh, grant that we get for this. Yes, yeah. there's no general fund money funding this. It's, it's Oregon State Marine Board um, funded, and then obviously the 25000 based on the surplus of the, the old boat. 
So the orange boat was sold? Not the orange one. The, um, that's a separate, we're actually getting the sponsons replaced on that, the, okay. the rubber around the edges. Um, it was one of the other jet alumina boats. Okay, so we'll still have the orange, but yep. it won't be, I think it's not going to be orange now, right? Correct. It's I call it the inner tube. It's going to yep. be a different color. Yes, that one will be green. I think people are <laughs> going to like the fact that they... Actually, I think the sheriff is going to like the fact that people won't know he's coming. <laughs> Blend in a little more. There's no more giant orange boat on the lake, folks. So be prepared. Follow the rules. Perfect. Okay, well, I'll take a motion, Commissioner Cameron. Wow. Okay, I get to do it again. <laughs> Uh, Madam Chair, I'll move that we approve a purchase order of the Rogue Jet Boat Works, Inc. Uh, in the amount of $116,630 for the one-time purchase of a 2023, wow, it's only 22, fast water 25-foot uh, center yes. console boat <laughs> used to patrol Oregon State Marine Waterways within Marion County. Wow, I'll second that motion. That boat just got a lot bigger quickly. It did. Within, we learned. Within the we're 20 minutes they were talking. Here. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. And by the way, I'm going to go find a 25 inch boat. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a keychain. <laughs> 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 a little toy. Yeah, just something that he can have. Thank anyway, you. thank you. Have a good day. All right. Um, Commissioner Willis, would you read the calendar, please? I would be happy to, Madam Chair. And before, before you jump into that, I just want to say welcome to Mr. Bush from the great state of Texas. He is here visiting his daughter, Tanisha, who we hired a few months ago as our government affairs, I don't even know, officer, director, something? Yeah. That was a great hire, by the way. It was. Good job. We really like your kid. Good job. <laughs> okay. Uh, today, it is March 30th. It's 9 o'clock, and we just completed our board session here in the center hearing room on the first floor of 555 Court Street Northeast in Salem. Uh, at 2 o'clock this afternoon, we have a Career Technical Education Center Cafe <coughs> ribbon cutting located at 3501 Portland Road Northeast in Salem. Uh, and then at 3 o'clock this afternoon, we have a retirement celebration for Lori Steele, <coughs> our long-serving treasurer here in Marion County. Here in this room, the center hearing room, that's the first floor of 555 Court Street Northeast in Salem. Tomorrow, Thursday, March 31st, 8 in the morning, we have a Juno and Coffin Butte Landfill Pacific Coast Region Compost Facility Tour located in Toledo, Oregon. We're going to be talking trash all day tomorrow. And then at 1.30 in the afternoon, we have an AOC Federal Land Management Subcommittee, and that's a virtual meeting. And then on Friday, April 1st at 7.30 in the morning, we have a car parade to kick off Child Abuse Prevention Month located at the Oregon State Fairgrounds. 2378 Sunny View Road, Northeast in Salem. That's one that I know we always like going to, even though the subject matter is so tragic. And then Tuesday, April 5th at 9.30 in the morning, we have a management update located in the commissioner's boardroom. That's the fifth floor of this building, 555 Court Street, Northeast in Salem. And then Tuesday, April 5th at noon, we have a mid Willamette Valley Housing Alliance Executive Committee meeting, and that is a virtual meeting. On Tuesday, April 5th at 2 in the afternoon, we have a check presentation from Mary Lucas to the Victim Assistance Division. That's located in the Human Resources Training Room on the fourth floor of this building. Again, that's 555 Court Street Northeast in Salem. And then on Wednesday, April 6th at 9 in the morning, we have board session, again located in this room, center hearing room, first floor of 555 Court Street Northeast in Salem. That's what we got. Hey, you gave me the short calendar today. I appreciate that. I mean, yeah. I usually don't get the short calendar. I'm trying calendar. to go into a rotation. Obviously, I'm not doing a great job at that. <laughs> well, um, I found a new um, training ground. Did you now? Mm -hmm. so what kind of training are we doing? <laughs> I signed them all. I signed, I signed, okay. I'm just thinking a matter? couple years ahead. No, you need to sign it. Okay. Just cross. Just sign underneath me. Okay. Just, oh, okay. Friend, I'll fix it. I signed. Uh, I, I was sitting here <laughs> thinking what I was going to say. <laughs> is today the thirtieth? It is. It's yeah. two days away from, from the greatest day, day of the day year. Away from the greatest day of the year. Oh yes, we should all sing happy birthday to both Mr. Bush and to Commissioner. Cameron. Oh, that's very good. That's a great idea. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do when's, it. Ready? One, when's, two, when's three. Mr. Bush's happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Commissioner Cameron and Mr. Bush. Perfect. 
Happy birthday to you. Yay! When's your birthday? Today. Today. Oh, happy birthday. Yes, there was a little bird that told me earlier. He's not a fool like me. Oh, uh, well. Was, it was also Easter, though, right? Weren't you also born Easter? Easter and April Fool's April Fool's. Day. There you go. Yes. See? So you can be, you, you got uh, two choices there. Yeah, I'm a fool and a saint. So it kind of fits my personality. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know, it's going to be on somewhere, somewhere in the middle, and I waffle back and forth. Anyways, I started to say, I found a new uh, rec area um, that is uh, in Detroit. Cool. Uh, Elaine DeGeorge has this property up on the hill. It's in the city limits that... I think she's trying to figure out what to do with it, and uh, there was six of us, six or seven of us that took a walk uh, up this hill from uh, Cluster to the top is like a 730 foot elevation. Oh my wow. Gosh. wow. From my house to the top. Yeah. Wow. And we did it Sunday, and I was looking at my schedule and I go, hey, I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Uh, Yesterday, you're gonna get awfully and, skinny doing that. Yeah, without a bunch of people, right? <laughs> and uh, so uh, my friend Tim came up, and we uh, we did that hike yesterday um, from the house. The other day, Elaine drove us over across, but we did it from the house all the way up, um, and still didn't get to the very top because it, her property ends up, and then it goes up to the forest service. There's forest service behind her. But um, it would be the perfect place for, um, I was telling Jan this yesterday, you could put some homes down below. There's some places you could build some homes. But once it starts going up, it would be the perfect place for, and one of the guys that was on the first hike uh, is a mountain biker. And it would be the perfect uh, spot cool. to open yeah, a mountain park, cool. bike park up there, right in the city of Detroit. Of course. Oh. A zip line would be really cool all the way down to the lake, but I don't, oh, I don't think ODOT would allow us to your put dream, a zip line I like over your dreams. Highway. Yeah, I like your I like your dreaming over there. You're doing it good. really You're was. Good. It was one of those visions that that it was like we all said this would be a perfect spot. People can hike. You can. I mean, it's a steep hike. I, I mean, I burned. Uh, I can only I, imagine. I burned like That's almost two thousand calories, and we did it. We did it round trip in an hour and ten minutes. Um, but neat place. So next time you're up, uh, it's beautiful. When you get your trailer up there, when, when you bring your trailer. This weekend. Okay. Well, when you get a free day, uh, I'll show you where that is and take you on a little tour if you want to get a little exercise. I do. I, I walk a few times a day in yeah. Detroit when we're up there. I did skip the dam tour the other day though because I knew that they were going to be tortured by the stairs. Some of our staff went. Oh, I told. I, I heard that. I told <laughs> specifically you cannot use the elevator. Uh huh. In well, the dam. I heard that. And I guess they told you that I said that, didn't they? Yes. I wasn't serious. Well, I told I told this I told Chad yesterday. Shoot, I should have went because then I would have overrode Commissioner Cameron. We would have taken the elevator. They well, told him it was I, broken. Here's what the report back I got from Chad is that he was struggling and sweating. There's a and video that, that you that Tanisha was like leading the pack. I, there's a video of her. Like, I don't know who's taking it. She's like cowboy up. He, she's like hauling, and she's like using her hands on her legs. I did see. Good for you. Like girls are efficient. Well, they those stairs are really steep, aren't they? What? what? And, you, and you feel like you're in a cave because you have stalactites coming down, and the yeah. water's dripping around you. And Chad really is doubled cool. over at one point on one of the stair landings. Like the breathing that's coming from his jacket is like. I certainly hope somebody knows how to provide CPR. He may pass out. <laughs> I don't so, know where it, who's, who's, I think it was, oh, AJ, AJ put it on his Facebook page. Okay. So you can go watch I'll go, it. I'll go look at it. <laughs> I uh, so, um, Ed Flick and I did it a while ago, years ago, uh, when he was our emergency mm -hmm. manager, it was the two of us with Tim. Yeah. Uh, Eric wasn't on the trip. Oh. How'd Eric do? I wasn't there. How'd oh, Eric, how'd Eric I think do? he was leading it. He was patient. Yeah, because they do it regularly. He's in pretty good shape. Oh, very good. Shape. For a guy who works in an office all the time, I think he works out. But uh, when when Ed Flick and I did it, uh, and I wore my heart monitor, and of course I work out, but uh, I looked back at Ed, and he, he was down the stairs, and he was just dripping with sweat, <laughs> trying to get his sweatshirt off. Because you get warm in there, yeah. but it's cold, right? Yeah, so I'm glad you guys did that. 
Did you get some good photos? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's kind of neat to... You're going to do it, though? Yes. I'll do it with you again. Okay. Yeah, I told Eric. In fact, I'll use the elevator with you. <laughs> I'm going to do did the stairs. Did, did he take you down into the... Um, uh, where they developed the bomb shelters? Did... Okay, if you go into my office, you'll see one of the tin, the tin cans sitting by my chair. That's one of those uh, from the 1960s. It's one of the, what do you call it, the rations that they put in there. And he gave me one to bring back. It's sitting in my office. Yeah, he, he said, you have to climb down in to get it. And then we haul them out. But they, there's two places where they actually developed it for people to get into back in the 60s for, you know, nuclear war. Of course, now we need it again. We're fine. Moving on. All right. Okay. Is there anything else before we go down that rabbit hole? Great. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>